My internet has stayed with us, which means that it is time to embark upon part two of this very, whoops, click the wrong button of this very oddly timed daily where we had half a segment, and then I'd probably say three-fourths of a segment. Mm. This should be a slightly shorter part two. Um, I didn't really know how long I was going because everything crashed, but that's okay. We're back at this point where we've seen Snoot make layer tech choices to get in an unusual position, way, way up on expansions. I would say five fully running bases. There's about to be a, a mine out here, but five fully running bases in almost a sixth. And Protoss is just barely getting the fourth started. So I mean, six versus effectively three. Very, very odd. The way we can get away with this is the fact that our layer tech units are better. So Snoot loved that he's doing this. He looks like he's getting just crushed in the unit's loss tab. But the instant you look at the minimap, you can see the clear benefit. So Snoot going for the good old 20 minute hi uh, hive. <laughs> Freaking super late. What? No big deal. Notice the manipulation that Snoot is doing. Aha, I see you go phoenixes. Because I have so many resources, I will build lots of lings, roaches, and hydras. Not the best thing for a mass phoenix force to be up against. But if Vpro didn't build all these phoenixes, the mutalists would have done considerable damage and Snoot would have continued to bring the noise. So we see some tech to the uh, infestors. Not a dramatic tech, but consistently. The decision from Snoot is to find wide attack angles to drill in and to limit numbers of key units like there, picking off Colossus, three Void Rays, continuing to perform the drill. And this isn't willy-nilly attacking. It is done um, when the 2-2 upgrades are finished. So finally, it looks like V-Pro will lose this Phoenix army. We're still seeing massive teching with the layer. 101 drones. Seems weird. No big deal. Resources lost, greatly favoring Protoss. No big deal. We have all the bases we'll ever want and need. And now that we hit Hive Tech, this is ordinarily where Zergs have to sit on their asses. Right? Wait, 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 wait. I hope I can stay alive for my Broodlords and Derp. I hope I had enough Infestors. <sighs> Not anymore. We can just throw out three Vipers, build more Hydras, continue to upgrade, and, and really hurt. <laughs> that Protoss. We have one more round of aggression in us. I will also note Zerg almost fully neglects this expand all game long, but it's there. There's a couple Zerglings coming up, a couple Hydras move along to the top side. We can still do this sort of stuff. V-Pro has been essentially entirely defensive, and look at these little attack tactics. Hitting one side with a bunch of units, hitting the other side with a bunch of units. Units lost continues to stockpile for Snoop. Not a problem. His creep spread is divine. Look at that. Ooh. Now starting to get up all those spines that we know and love are part of that late game tech. Ooh, we got some Briblurbs. Good old Briblurbs. And continuing to just curl as many units as possible to pick off all these key bases. This is sacrificing maybe a few thousand minerals to do some damage to keep Protoss defensively positioned. At the start of the game, we were buying time with these attacks to get up all these bases. If our opponent didn't have excellent defense, we would have just straight up won. Now we are buying time to get up our big old Broodlord stuffs. Broodlord spine in red ridiculous numbers with ridiculous bank doing the nice pull and shoot and all that good jazz now in this position if you were doing a traditional wings of liberty mindset you'd be dead if you know when the void rays are there death would be right around the corner however at any point given the setup that snoot has geez he has 17 20 larva he can flood stupid amounts of Corruptors, or he can flood Roach Hydra and overrun Hell. If, as long as he's hitting his Injects, he might have 80 Larva available and can really just jam right on in there. 
We haven't really seen Snoot stop attacking all game long. He's just been the swarm, man. So I'm going to speed this up, because the game kind of, uh, the pacing slows down a little bit more. We see the, the sort of more usual Broodlord Corruptor force, but the Infester count is not nearly as high. It's the Viper count and the Spine Crawler count that will wind up being quite high. We can see more spines being produced. And this sort of thing. Now, I want to talk a little bit about bases. In general, if you are going for this style, where you're trying to have the bloated layer tech and get way ahead and expands, it is entirely possible that if you look at this mouse cursor that the map can be split. You lose if the map is split. So Snoot's goal would be to eliminate this base and prevent VPro from ever getting this base, or to do that for this base and prevent VPro from ever getting that base. Essentially, you are claiming 7v5 is about even because I'm going to have thrown away so much stuff at the start of the game. I'd also like to note that VPro does not have the best anti-Broodlord army, which is why it's okay for Snoot not to have a big old pack of infestors. All that crazy aggression at the start forced VPro into more stalker, more sentry, more non-ideal units in the late, late, late game. Less um, Archons, less Colossus, this kind of thing. And I will also note, we can, I mean, just looking at Snoot play, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for the Protoss to have just died. To have just frickin' become deaded. And Snoot does the smart thing, pulls back and tries to pick off bases. If I'm Zerg in this position, I'm gonna be looking at this bottom base as a bonus base. I've already shut him out of this one. I've already very nearly shut him out of this one. So if I can kill off that south base, it's great. Not my number one goal. Denying ever more bases and just sort of making sure I'm keeping tabs on that is good. So now we're seeing a little bit more of a traditional setup in the late game. The sort of slow rebuild of the Brood Lords. However, we're against a much lower base count Protoss. Kind of funky. We still have the Zerglings. Oh, doing all the Zergling things. And again, it's okay for these to die. Love the way that Snoot's playing this out. He's just been attacking so much. And I actually, I, I do like the decision to pick off cannons and not to go, like, freak out on the probes. Um, excellent way to make this an even more vulnerable spot for the Protoss. Alright, so taking out the base. The usual Broodlord Infester. There will be more Vipers thrown in. Um, I can actually probably speed this up a little bit. Here is another instance of the big goal if you are ever doing one of these bloated layer tech is to just make sure he doesn't get that one base to equalize with you. You never want him to equalize ever. You're hoping to take a massive amount of losses to ensure that that never happens. So VPro, I think actually doing a smart thing, uh, <laughs> getting a Stupid amount of cannons, which ends up being perfect in this spot because, you know, you just don't really want counterattacks uh, happening. Now, I'll note, if this were a map like Cloud Kingdom, it would be much easier to assault these bases. However, it is not Cloud Kingdom. New Kirk City is one big line. In fact, in the minimap, I will draw the bottom of the rectangle. The bottom of the rectangle goes right through this watchtower. Here's the bottom line. All the real action happens up here in this top half. And that's basically just like a big, oops, a big line. So this stuff is kind of unavoidable. But Snoot is not trying to go for the jugular any longer. He's just very, very carefully wiggling his way up to this top side, very carefully protecting the Broodlords just to pick off expansions or hopefully a lot of probes. And in the MVP style of StarCraft, the most important thing always is to make sure your units stay alive, not to do a ton of damage. Pretty typical big engagement, pretty typical big micro. Nice fungals. I'm not gonna analyze this because most people know that when you see a pack of Void Rays, you wanna hit it with a fungal because it feels nice. 
these sorts of attacks would be more common on Cloud Kingdom, Daybreak, not so common here on Newkirk City, but you know, take what you will. This bottom base, this top base, and this middle base are the three bases that, as a Zerg, you want to be assaulting. So, kind of interestingly, as Snoot has been doing all of um, the what would be described as a typical Wings of Liberty move, there's yet another nice impact of this bloated layer tech. This creep spread is much farther out. As we saw back in this bloated mid game, all these kinds of attacks were swinging in all the time to assault the Protoss. So this allowed the creep to be much farther forward than it would ordinarily be. If you were going super passive, quick tech to Broodlord and Fester, this creep would not be that far spread. So here we are. Of the 21 minutes, zooming forward to the 39 minute mark, the creep spread is substantial. So suddenly, all these spores, all these spines, all these spines, Jesus, all the Jesus, why are these, is there a spine counting station? There is. What the fuck? He has 53 spine crawlers? What? Where are they? Oh my god, did he go to Costco? How does he have so many spine crawlers? Where are they? Oh my god. Oh my god, he has 53 spine crawlers? Okay, well that's great. Whew, okay, maybe maybe you won't have 53 spine crawlers. Like, freaked me out, I almost like fell out of my chair. 53, is he insane? Whoa, he's not insane, here's the thing. Um, the fact that we spread our creep due to this bloated layer tech is permitting us to utilize all these spines and spores as part of our attack not part of our defense, or part of our very slow, slow approach. Snoot very responsibly, continuing his pullbacks, continuing his carefulness. Uh-oh, we're Zerg, we've taken all our half of the bases. This is the biggest target, in addition to this one, and this top one. Just the closest ones. Okay. Cool. Continued shoving, Broodlord's just poking in and then pulling back. Just want to make sure our Protoss does not equalize in our base count. At some point, Snoot's going to bring all his stuff forward. He really should. He really should be aware of that. Alright, there we go. Now we got some goody goodness. This is where the Vipers become such a pivotal piece to this puzzle. And other things that begin with letter P. All the spores and spines ensure that if you drag a Colossus, Void Ray, Carrier, Archon, any one of the big late game power units for Protoss, that it'll die. So whereas we use this negative space up here as retreat grounds for the Broodlords, we're going to be using Spine Crawlers as our retreat grounds for the Broodlords. And of course, small packs of Zerglings can never be bad, especially with Vipers, with Blinding Cloud. I'm just gonna turn down my thing, turn it down. Anytime I've I've determined that if you go forward and backwards in replays, sound will slowly increase. An interesting fact. So this is um I mean this is great, this is fantastic. But you know, I I, I just love to point out Snoot's just an incredible connection between the layer and the hive. All this is possible thanks to this creep spread. And that creep spread is all possible due to the aggressive layer tech. Or not the aggressive layer tech, the long time spent being in layer tech. So obviously, all good things are not invincible in StarCraft II, um, but they more or less are. <laughs> oh, so good. So um, I'm just gonna be speeding things along. And then, of course, at some point, Snoot decides to bring this giant pack of spine crawlers, defending primarily the depleted extractor, to bring those all down into the engagement. So as we come to the unit's lost tab, I'd like you to still be amazed that Snoot has always been about 10k units lost more than V-Pro. And yet here in this position, we would clearly label V-Pro as close to dead. And per usual, whenever you are taking the key critical expansion that would prevent your Protoss from equalizing, this is a sign that you are about to win. Um, 
Yeah! We blasted through that second half very nicely. I like that. Fairly low investor count. That's okay. It's made up for by the mineral investment of lots of spines, lots of spores at our front lines. In a sense, we are using minerals uh, of the um, spine and spore to replace the need for a lot of gas of the infestors, because they'll functionally do the same thing, protect your broodlords. And help you advance forward. And uh, Snoot wins in like three minutes, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna x it. Do, 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 do. Oh, and by the way, Evo's in the middle of the map. This is way for the Vipers to recharge their energy on the cheapest structure. So, all the yoinkings happening. Not extremely necessary, but extremely awesome. Come on. Time. Plus, plus, plus speed. Plus, plus, plus. Plus, plus, plus. Oh my god, he doesn't have level 3 melee attack. How embarrassing. But that's fine. Shut down this base. Shut down this base all we ever needed to do. We are still not ahead in terms of units lost. Never have been, never will be. We are the swarm. We are going to attack as much as possible. And I'm going to make my encoder suffer as much as possible. Cool. There's the GG. Nice. So, with a rather unusual part one, we did two things. In part one, we got the chance to see how in the first ten minutes, this opening from Snoot really accounted for everything. And then we secondly saw the way that Snoot was starting to answer a lot of the questions that are being posed by Protoss, such as how do you put pressure on? How do you get more expansions? How do you defend these attacks? For these types of questions, Snoot was relying on the layer tech, adding on more hatcheries, um, getting hydras and mutalisks instead of doing things like getting the higher tech things, like infestors, ultras, broodlords, all that good stuff. Um, we saw that done very nicely in part one, and it set Snoot up to get six bases real fast. And then in part two, we saw the continuation, the sort of after effects um, of that layer-focused opening. We saw that Snoot was losing a hell of a lot of stuff, way more than the Protoss, but was still keeping Protoss pinned back, still keeping Protoss low on the base count. So Snoot is essentially trying to win with lots of units. Plenty of points where Snoot could have won if V-Pro was a worse player, but V-Pro's strong. So it went on to the late game, and here near the end we got to see that the layer allowed us to have our creep spread all the way the far of the hell forward. <laughs> um, and um, um, this allowed our spines and spores to do all that damage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a very short break because of the delay at the start. This is going to be like a 20 second break. And then I'm going to load up one more replay where Snoot will actually win in the layer tech phase. So we can see yet again how this swarm style Zerg can be very effective. Pow! Alright, 20 second break. <laughs>